Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 12th of August 2019 and the time has just gone at 9.30 British summer time. Uh, it's been a reasonably subdued start to the European session. Uh, equity markets largely opened higher but we have seen a bit of a turnaround uh, in the last say, 15 or 20 minutes. Um, some of the major stories um, from from the last say, um, 12, or, 12 or so hours, um, the PMS Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank, um, devalued the, the yuan yet again, um, but the, and they fixed it at 7 spot 0211 versus the US dollar, uh, but it actually, even though they devalued it, they didn't, they didn't devalue it as much as the market expected. So we did see a bit of a push higher. Uh, in Chinese stocks overnight. Uh, the Asian session was fairly quiet as the likes of Japan, Singapore and India, uh, those markets were all closed because of holidays. So we got off to a reasonably positive start in Europe, but things have turned uh, a little, turned over a little. Um, it's the same old story in relation to tr trade tensions is still hanging over uh, global equity markets. Uh, on the back, at the back end of last week, on Friday, President Trump said in relation to, said he won't be doing any business with Huawei, uh, the Chinese tech giant. That's obviously kind of soured relationships between, between the two sides. Uh, over the weekend or overnight, Goldman Sachs have lowered their fourth quarter U.S. GDP fourth, fourth, forecast from two percent down to one point eight percent, and they're not and they're and they're now stating they do not believe there will be a trade deal between the U.S. and China before the U.S. presidential election in 2020. Um, also, there is there is going to continued political uncertainty in Italy. Uh, back in the last week, um, it looks like we've had uh, an update from Italy at the back in the last week. It looks like uh, we could be heading for a general election in Italy, uh, and and that political stability is also going to um, factor in the um, in, in markets, European markets. Um, Pushing lower this morning. So what I'll do now is take a look at uh, the week ahead article, discuss some of the major topics that's that's uh, that's in front of us for the next few days, and then I'll look at some of the major major markets. So if you go to our website cmcmarkets.com, under insights and under news analysis, you'll find where, the, where you'll find this article, and this is where the bulk of um of our uh, analyst updates get posted to. Uh, so if you take a look uh, what what we expect in the next few days. Tomorrow and Tuesday, uh, we have um, UK wages and unemployment figures. On Wednesday, we have UK CPI figures. Uh, the, the two of these should be kind of will be will be quite important. Um, the unemployment rate in the UK is very very low, and wages are actually growing at a fairly decent rate. And you can see here the wage rate, excluding bonuses, is uh, most recently 3.6 percent, and the inflation rate uh, in the UK is pretty much bang in line with the Bank Bank of England's target of two percent. So workers are getting a decent rate rate of um a, a decent real wage. Um, but the question is, will they actually be actually going out and spending it? Because there has been some evidence that consumer confidence is, is in decline because people holding off on account of Brexit. Um, looking ahead to Wednesday, we have uh, retail sales and industrial production figures from China. This would be closely watched because China is obviously cooling, uh, and any, any kind of sign that the depth of the Chinese economy is slowing down at a faster rate could kind of uh, um, speed up the kind of jitters that traders already have in relation to the state of the global economy. On Wednesday, we first have figures from Balfour Beatty. These figures should be interesting because Balfour Beatty, a number of years ago, the construction company went on, underwent a major restructuring program. Um, and they managed to actually kind of survive, uh, which, which was very impressive in relation to, because there was talk of that company being in major trouble. Um, as, 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 you, as you recall, Carillion um, went, went under. That, that was, um, there, there are parallels drawn between the, between the two. Carillion didn't, didn't survive. Balfour Beatty had a brutal restructuring program, but they managed to turn it around. So those figures will be interesting. Uh, on Wednesday, we have first half figures from Prudential. We have fourth quarter numbers from Cisco Systems. On Thursday, we have UK retail sales. And this is what I was talking about in relation to unemployment rate in the UK, the earnings rate, and also the inflation rate. So um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of evidence stating that uh, citizens in the UK are in jobs and they're earning a decent wage, but are they going out and actually spending money? And that's going to be the crucial bit. Um, on Thursday, we also have second quarter figures from Walmart. Second quarter figures from NVIDIA uh, and on Friday 
uh, we had third quarter figures from Deere & Co. Given, um, given that not too long ago, um, the, the Beijing authorities instructed state-owned um, organizations in China to halt agriculture and imports from the US, the, the forecast um, that Deere gave will be very, very interesting. That's what traders are going to keep an eye out for. Take a look now at some of the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. So as you can see here, um, the FTSE 100 had a fairly sharp sell-off uh, at the back end of July. The market has rebounded and a sizable chunk of the ground that was lost in relation to the latest round of trade tensions has been recouped and we're comfortably above the 200-day moving average, this red line here. And that comes into play at 71.91. And essentially, why we hold above that metric is it's, it's likely that we could see the, um, the, the wider market push to the upside, provided we, we hold above this metric. And should that be the case, we could be looking at targeting this area here at around 7,400. We can see that the 100-day moving average, this the yellow line, and this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, the both have acted as support not too long ago, and if metrics have acted as support in the past, it's, like, it's possible that it might become resistance in the future. And these two metrics almost kind of, kind of you know, not, not too far, you know, almost kind of um, flank uh, this, 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 the kind of 7,400, kind of a psychological, psychological support number. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at target in this area. And if we do manage to kind of have a, have a a size of a move north of the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, and that comes into play at 74.38. If you have a size of move above that, we could be looking at going to carry on the wider trend, heading up towards perhaps 7,600. If the market though does manage to turn over on itself yet again and fall back south of this red line here, the 20-day moving average, we could be looking at retesting this region down here in around 7,090 down to 7,040. So this zone here could be looking at retested. And then, of course, if you go below that, the psychologically important 7,000 mark could be come into play. I'll take a look now at what's going on over in Germany and the DAX. Similar scenario whereby had a major sell-off uh, major sell-off last week towards the back end of the last week the market managed to recoup some of the ground but we're just about holding above the 30 moving average this red line here and that comes to play at 11,654 what we hold above that line is that it's likely that we could continue to kind of continue to rebound um, and if we do press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 12,000 mark or perhaps even this yellow line here the 100 day moving average and that comes into play at 12,104 we can see on a few occasions that metric acted as both uh, acted as a support in the past and it, it's, that makes it more likely that it could be um, more likely that it could be significant in the future uh, if the market does manage to turn over on itself and continue in the kind of more, the more recent downward trend we could be looking heading back down towards 11,400 or perhaps even this level here in around 11,270. <laughs> Over in the US, um, I'm taking a look at the Dow Jones. So US markets are clearly in better shape. Notice how the sell-offs that the, that the US markets had um, were not, not nearly as severe as those in, in Europe. Also, as we're pointing out, the US markets were, were coming, when they were selling off recently, they were coming from all time highs rather than, say, a multi month high. So the US markets are in far better shape. We can see here that the market uh, has re 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 reclaimed a sizable chunk of the ground that was lost, somewhere in the region of around, say, 50 odd percent of the ground that was lost recently. Um, we're comfortably above the 2 day moving average on, on the Dow Jones. and. You know, while we kind of hold above that metric and hold above the kind of 26,000 mark, a big psychological number, while we hold above those metrics, it's likely that we could press on higher and keep on the next area to potentially keep an eye out for, uh, an area which could be potentially of importance, at this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play at 26,616. On a few occasions, that acted as both support and, resi and resistance, so it's likely it's more likely that, that that metric could be important in the future. And if you have a, a if you have a size of break above that, it could be looking at heading up towards 27,000. Once again, if the market does manage to turn lower, does drop below 26,000, we could be heading back down towards this red line here, the 20 moving average, and that comes to play at 25,595. 
I'll take a look at what's going on on the S&P 500. Similar scenario to the S&P with the Dow Jones uh, in that it's had a very sizable rebound. It's well above uh, its 200-day moving average here. It's well above that. Uh, while we hold above that, it's likely we could see the market press on higher from here. Uh, if we do manage to kind of press on higher from these levels, we're currently at uh, 2,912. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this, this blue line here. The 50-day moving average, uh, 2,944. A move beyond that could take us up to 2,950. Uh, and if we get above that level and we get comfortably above the 50-day moving average, it's, it's likely that the kind of wider upward trend of 2019 uh, is going to continue and we could be looking at then heading back up towards the 3000 mark. If the market though does manage to turn over on itself um, and starts, starts to drive lower, we could be looking at heading back down to heading back down towards this area down here. Um, um, the lows of Thursday last week in around 2871 this region here or perhaps even down and a break below that could take us back down towards this red line here the truly moving average at just south of 2,800 2,796 take a look at gold so gold has been one of the kind of major benefactors of the, uh, the sell-off global equity markets um, it's a flight it's, it's a classic flight the quality play combined with the fact that the US dollar has been fairly soft. All the chatter and the talk that the US economy is going to, is going to get, is going to be well, the global economy and, the, and in turn the US economy is going to slow down because of the, the trade tensions and, what, and whatnot. That's increased chatter about the Federal Reserve going to cut rates either in September and or December. Uh, and that's another reason why the, um, the gold market has done well. Uh, last, last week it racked up fresh six year highs. So we're in firmly an upward trend. Um, and if you get a press on higher from here, we're currently just south of, 11, of 1500. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at target retesting this area here in at 1555. If we do see any kind of move to the downside, we might see some fresh buyers enter the fold, seeing as buying the dip has been a very popular strategy in the last couple of months. So if we do drift lower from here, support can be found from this area here in around. 1472 or from this wider zone here um, 15 sorry apologies 1453 down to 1430 this entire zone here um, might might see um, might see an, an area of support uh, and if even if you drift below that uh, support can be found from the kind of big psychological number at 1400 take a look now what's going on on the oil market oil is taking a bit of a hammering as well and you know in the kind of more kind of you know in the white it, it finished higher on friday and, and rallied a bit on thursday but the, you know the last few weeks has been taking a bit of a hammering so tying in with the, with the trade story if the global economy is slowing down is the perception is that there will be less demand for oil um so if you take a look here at the oil market in the last few weeks it's been in a fairly clear downward trend a nice series of lower lows and lower highs um if you do manage if you can hold above the recent lows in around this area in, on um, Brent crude at 56 spot 71, if you can hold above those lows, we could be looking heading back towards the kind of psychologically important 60 mark. Um, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting this this blue line here, the 50 moving average at 63 spot 37. But if the market does manage to continue in the recent downward trend and take out the recent lows in around the kind of 56 area. We could be looking heading back down towards this zone here in around 52. But notice how uh, Brent crude is firmly below its 50-day moving average here, the blue line. It's also firmly below the, this red line here, which is its 200-day moving average. Uh, because I'll be talking about WTI, West Texas Intermediate, in one second. So similar here. T first thing we'll talk about is the moving averages. WTI, um, we, uh, since the, you know the last few weeks, we said a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. We could, even though we have bounced back on WTI, we can see that it's well below its blue line here, the 50 moving average, and this red line here, it's 200 moving averages. And while both markets are below their respective 50 moving averages, 50 day moving averages, and 200 moving averages, it's likely that we're going to see a continuation of both markets press lower. So if we do look to press lower on the um, WTI market. 
we could be looking at retesting this kind of zone down here, it just kind of south of $51 down to around kind of um, say down to sub $51 down to around 50.36. And if we do press below that, we could be looking at targeting this area here down at 48 bucks a barrel. If though, if though the market does manage to rebound, uh, we'd really need to kind of see a move back above the truly moving average, which comes into play at 56, about 24. We need to move kind of need to see a market kind of move back above that and kind of close above that on a daily basis to be more confident that the recent downward trend has come to an end. We'll take a look now at a couple of currency pairs. First things first, euro dollar. As I mentioned, the political uncertainty in Italy is a is a, is a factor. Um, the wider trend throughout 2019 has been very much of the downside on euro dollar. Yes, there was a fairly sizable bounce back between late May and late June, but as you can see, the market quickly turned over on itself and had a fairly aggressive sell off um, in, into early August. The market has rebounded, but it's still very much in a downward trend, and we're pressing lower again today. Uh, if, if the market does continue to drift lower, we could be looking heading back towards this region here in at one spot. 1110 uh, and a fairly sizable break below that could could, could um, send the market even lower and take us back down take us back down to take us back towards uh, the psychologically important one spot 10 mark any bounces in a uh, in uh, in euro dollar would need to kind of overcome this area here this blue line here the fifth the moving average which comes into play in around one spot 1237 we could see in a few occasions to try to get above it, but it just even though I traded up to it, it couldn't couldn't actually get above it. So if you get above that metric, we could be looking at heading back towards this area at 113, which coincides with the 200 day moving average. And last but not least, the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, Sterling has obviously had a fairly rough ride recently. There seems to be a lot of chatter about a no deal Brexit. That's the way things appear to be going. That could all change. But for, while you, you, you see no deal Brexit being flashed across the headlines on a regular basis, that's likely to continue to put pressure on the British pound. And we can see here it's been in a steady decline uh, for recent months, and we're not too far. We're currently at uh, one spot 2062, so we're not too far away from the kind of psychologically important one spot 20 mark, and that could be an area of support should we press on lower from here. If we do manage to see a rebound um, in pound versus US dollar, we could see some. Resistance coming into play in around this region here in around the one spot 22 mark uh, If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC markets Please feel free to leave review and click reviews. Thank you very much